November 2, 1950. Battle raged as a small band of U.S. soldiers desperately fought to hold off an overwhelming attack. Days earlier, as Allied armies pushed deep into North Korea, victory in the Korean War in sight, Chinese forces unexpectedly entered the fight. Some 20,000 Chinese soldiers were crashing down on a few thousand exposed Americans. Casualties mounted. Among the wounded was a young soldier, Sergeant First Class Herbert Miller, his ankle shattered by an enemy grenade. As he lay helpless in a ditch, he was spotted by a communist soldier. The soldier approached, raised his rifle to Miller's head, and prepared to fire. As he began to close his eyes, accepting his fate, Miller caught sight of a man rushing toward the enemy soldier. It was an American, a battlefield chaplain, who he'd never seen before. The chaplain pushed the rifle aside, then helped Miller to his feet, as the communist soldier watched in stunned silence. Father Emil J. Capon did not carry a weapon. He'd never fired a gun, yet had already earned a reputation for battlefield heroics as a chaplain in the United States Army. A veteran of World War II, Father Capon was among the first Americans ordered to Korea at the outbreak of war. A few months into the fighting, he was decorated with a bronze star for braving enemy fire to drag wounded soldiers to safety. And so it was no surprise that on November 2, 1950, Father Capon refused to evacuate. He remained on the battlefield tending to wounded and dying men. He carried soldiers back toward American lines and dug shallow trenches to shield the wounded from enemy fire. Capon and Miller joined their captured comrades on a forced march north to a Korean prisoner camp. For miles, Father Capon carried Miller on his back, fully aware that the sergeant would be shot if he fell behind. The harsh Korean winter had arrived by the time the prisoners reached their camp. As men froze, Father Capon gave them his own clothes. He traded his watch for a blanket, making socks for those who had none. And as men starved on tiny rations of corn and bird seed, Father Capon somehow found a way to sneak into nearby fields, returning with potatoes and rice. He soon earned himself a nickname, the Good Thief. One POW, Lieutenant Paul Roach, would later recall, he saved my life just by the work he did over there. He gave me faith and inspired me to live. Another prisoner, Mike Dow, said, I'll never doubt the power of prayer again. Father could not fail. Nor could he be broken. Ridiculed by the guards for his faith, he was stripped of his clothes and forced to stand in the cold. Yet at night, he would slip into the prisoners' huts, providing encouragement and leading them in prayer. But the brutal conditions took their toll. Father Capon grew thin and weak, was stricken with dysentery, then pneumonia. The guards ordered he be carried to the camp hospital. The men had another name for it, the Death House. None who entered ever returned. The prisoners despaired, knowing what this meant for their beloved chaplain. Tears filling his eyes, Mike Dow begged him not to go. Father Capon's faith held firm. Mike, don't be sad, he said. I'm going where I always wanted to go, and when I get there, I'll be saying a prayer for you guys. Father Capon died on May 23, 1951, and was buried in a mass grave near the camp. His remains were never found. When hostilities ceased, the surviving POWs emerged from the camp, carrying with them a large wooden crucifix, secretly crafted by a Jewish prisoner and made from firewood the men had smuggled. It was a tribute to their friend, the Catholic chaplain whose willing sacrifice had inspired men of all faiths and all backgrounds to live on. Decades later, Pope John Paul II named Father Capon a servant of God, the first step toward sainthood. Then, in 2013, at a ceremony at the White House, President Barack Obama posthumously awarded Father Emil Capon the United States military's highest award the Medal of Honor. On hand were nine men whose lives were saved by Father Capon. Among them, Herbert Miller, Paul Roach, and Mike Dow. Their lives were a testament to the most decorated chaplain in Army history. A man who lived the teachings of John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. <laughs>